Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. A joint statement was issued following His Majesty the King's visit to Saudi Arabia. His Majesty conducted an official visit to Saudi Arabia today where he met with the custodian of the two holy mosques. The visit comes under the framework of the historic brotherly ties between the two countries. A discussion session was held in the presence of the Saudi Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, where the strong bilateral relations were highlighted as well as the cooperation and coordination in all fields and means to further enhance them. Both leaders also discussed discussed the recent developments in the region and the world and affirmed their united stances towards regional and international issues of common concern. The two sides stress the contents of the Al Ula Declaration, which stipulated the full and accurate implementation of the vision of the custodian of the two holy mosques, which was approved by the Supreme Council at its 36th session in December 2015. According to a specific timetable and careful follow up, including completing the elements of economic unity in the joint defense and security systems, coordinating positions, and accelerating bilateral work between the GCC states to remove all outstanding issues in a manner that enhances the solidarity and stability of the GCC states and strengthens its regional role through unifying political positions, developing political partnerships with the international community, regional and international organizations, and the strength and cohesion of the GCC states and unity among its members. Regarding bilateral relations, the two sides praised the outstanding results of the second meeting of the Saudi-Bahraini Coordination Council, which was held in Bahrain under the co-chairmanship of His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the resulting launch of a number of political, military, security, commercial, investment, cultural and tourism initiatives that contribute to strengthening the various aspects of cooperation between the two brotherly countries and people. In the security and military field, the two sides expressed their satisfaction with the existing cooperation between the two countries, stressing the continued strengthening of joint cooperation between them in this field. The two leaders stressed the importance of continuing to work on developing joint military cooperation and enhancing security cooperation between the two countries and integration between the security services to consolidate security and deter attempts to undermine the security and stability of the two countries. They stress the danger of growing capabilities of terrorist groups in general in the region and Iran's smuggling of missiles and drones of these groups in order to target the countries of the region. In the fields of energy and climate change, the two sides praise the close cooperation between them and the successful efforts of the countries of the OPEC Plus group that are aimed at stabilizing the global oil markets. They also stress the importance of continuing this cooperation and the need for all participating countries to abide by the OPEC Plus agreement. The two sides welcome the cooperation in the oil and gas sector and the exchange of experience and expertise in this field. They also agreed to enhance means of cooperation on international climate policies and work to focus on emissions rather than sources through the application of the circular carbon economy approach and the Green Middle East Initiative and express their aspirations to enhance cooperation in implementing this initiative and seek to establish a regional complex to extract carbon, its use and storage to contribute to addressing carbon emission in an economically sustainable manner. In addition to cooperating in the field of hydrogen, developing technologies related to its transportation and storage and exchanging expertise and experiences to apply best practices in the field of hydrogen projects. The two sides also express their aspirations to enhance cooperation in the fields of energy efficiency, renewable energy and clean technology hydrocarbon resources and the development of related projects in these areas to contribute to the sustainability of demand of for energy supplies globally. In addition to cooperation in the areas of nuclear and radiological control, the two sides stress the importance of enhancing the trade exchange of electricity energy, including benefiting from the electrical connections, exchanging experiences in energy sector projects, cooperating to simulate innovation, applying emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence in the energy sector, developing the environment for it and working to localize energy sector products and the association supply baskets. In economic and as commercial affairs, the two sides affirm their determination to raise uh, the pace of joint economic cooperation by stimulating the government and private sectors and the continuation of the exchange of visits between business owners to reach a qualitative trade and investment exchange and to establish economic projects in the two countries that serve the 2030 visions of the two kingdoms. 
In the fields of culture, media, tourism and social development, the two sides stress the importance of highlighting the positive image of both countries and strengthening and developing cooperation in these areas, which contributes to consolidating and strengthening joint work and enhances partnership opportunities between the private sector in the two countries. They also stress the importance of enabling the private sector to exploit the available opportunities and various possibilities in the two brotherly countries and work to develop human caterers, especially in the fields of joint industries between the two sides and projects to import materials needed for infrastructure work and inter-trade, strategic partnership in various educational and health fields and strengthening cooperation. The two sides also reviewed issues of common interest on the regional and international arenas, stressing their continued support to achieve all that would establish peace and stability in the Middle East and the world, and the importance of reaching a comprehensive and just settlement of the Palestinian-Israeli conflict in accordance with the two-state solution, relevant international legitimacy resolutions, and the initiative of Arab peace to ensure the right of the Palestinian people to establish their independent state on the 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital. The two sides shared the same view regarding continuing their efforts to find a comprehensive political solution to the Yemeni crisis based on the Gulf Initiative and its executive mechanism. The outcomes of the Comprehensive National Dialogue Conference, the Riyadh Conference, UN Security Council Resolution No. 2216, Saudi Arabia's initiative to end the Yemeni crisis in a manner that preserves the unity, safety, sovereignty and independence of Yemen and rejects any interference in its internal affairs and condemns the continued targeting of airports, objects and vital facilities by the Houthi terrorist militia in Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. The two sides welcomed the Security Council's adoption of a resolution renewing sanctions against the Houthis, designating them as a terrorist group, including them in the list of Yemen sanctions and imposing an arms embargo on them, while appreciating the role played by the King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Center to alleviate the suffering of the Yemeni people. Regarding the Iraqi issue, the two leaders expressed their wishes for the formation of an Iraqi government that would continue working for the security, stability and development of Iraq, eliminating terrorism and stopping foreign interference in its internal affairs. As for the Lebanese issue, the two sides affirmed their keenness on the security, stability and unity of the Lebanese territories and the importance of carrying out comprehensive reforms to ensure that Lebanon overcomes its crisis and confines arms to the legitimate state institutions and that Lebanon would not be a launching pad for any terrorist acts that target the security and stability of the region, such as Hezbollah, whether through the media or seminars and not be a source of the drug scourge that threatens the safety of societies. With regard to the Syrian crisis, the two sides stress that a political solution is the only solution to the Syrian crisis. In this regard, they support the efforts of the United Nations and the Special Envoy to implement the relevant international resolutions, foremost of which is Security Council Resolution No. 2254, and to stop regional interventions and projects that threaten the unity, sovereignty and territorial integrity of Syria. They affirmed their support for the Syrian people and the need to support international humanitarian efforts in Syria. With regard to the situation in Sudan, the two sides indicated their continued support for all that would achieve security and stability in Sudan, wishing Sudan and its people stability and prosperity. And on the Iranian nuclear issue, they stressed the importance of cooperation and serious and effective handling of Iran's nuclear and missile issue with its components and its repercussions in a manner that contributes to achieving regional and international security and stability, emphasizing the principles of good neighborliness and respect for UN resolutions and international legitimacy and sparing the region from the destabilizing activities, especially the Iranian missile program. And in this regard, they demand the concerned party to take into account the interests, security and stability of all countries in the region. Regarding the Libyan issue, the two sides expressed the importance of reaching a political solution to the Libyan crisis in accordance with the resolutions of international legitimacy in a manner that preserves the interests of the Libyan people and the territorial integrity of Libya and enhances security and peace in the region. They also stressed the need to withdraw mercenaries, foreign fighters and foreign forces from Libya. With regard to Afghanistan, the two sides stressed the need to support security and stability in Afghanistan and not to allow the existence of safe havens for terrorists and extremists in it. They condemned any acts aimed at recruiting Afghan refugees in various conflict areas and expressed the importance of supporting relief efforts and humanitarian work in Afghanistan. Noting Saudi Arabia's initiative to call for the holding of the extraordinary meeting on December 19, 2021 in Islamabad and the important decisions it issued aimed at achieving stability and development in Afghanistan. 
They also affirmed their determination to strengthen cooperation on all political issues and formulate common positions that preserve their security and stability and the importance of continued coordination and consultation regarding regional and international developments in a manner that contributes to achieving security, stability and prosperity for the two brotherly countries and their people and the world at large. His Majesty the King expressed thanks and appreciation to the Saudi monarch for the warm welcome and uh, generous hospitality during the visit. The Saudi monarch wished His Majesty the King Bahrain and its people further progress and prosperity. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the President of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, on the UAE's presidency of the UN Security Council for the month of March. His Majesty the King said that the UAE presidency of the UN Security Council would contribute to bolstering the Council's role in strengthening global security and stability and finding solutions to current international issues. His Majesty the King hailed the UAE's global standing in diplomatic and active diplomacy, wishing the brotherly country and its people further development, progress and prosperity. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the Vice President of the UAE, Prime Minister and Dubai Ruler His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum on the UAE's presidency of the UN Security Council for the month of March. His Majesty the King said that the UAE presidency of the UN Security Council would contribute to bolstering the Council's role in strengthening global security and stability and supporting development and cooperation in the world. His Majesty the King hailed the UAE's global standing, confidence in its policy and competent and active diplomacy, wishing the brotherly country country and its people further development, progress and prosperity. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to Abu Dhabi Crown Prince and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan on the UAE's presidency of the UN Security Council for the month of March. His Majesty the King said that the UAE presidency of the UN Security Council would contribute to bolstering the Council's role in strengthening global security and stability and supporting development and cooperation in the world. His Majesty the King hailed the UAE's global standing, confidence in its policy and competent and active diplomacy, which contributes to supporting global security, stability and peace, wishing the brotherly country and his people further development, progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the President of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan on the UAE's presidency of the UN Security Council for the month of March. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister noted that the UAE's presidency of the UN Security Council would contribute to bolstering the Council's role in strengthening global security and stability and finding solutions to current international issues. His Royal Highness commended the UAE's global standing and effective diplomacy, wishing the country and its people further development, progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum on the UAE's presidency of the UN Security Council for the month of March. His Royal Highness noted that the UAE's presidency of the UN Security Council would contribute to bolstering the Council's role in strengthening global security and stability as well as supporting international development and cooperation. He commended the UAE's global standing confidence in policy and effective diplomacy, wishing the country and its people further development development, progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, on the UAE's presidency of the UN Security Council for the month of March. His Royal Highness noted the UAE's presidency of the UN Security Council would contribute to bolstering the Council's role in strengthening global security and stability, as well as supporting international development and cooperation. His Royal Highness commended the UAE's global standing confidence in the policy and effective diplomacy, wishing the country and its people further development, progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met the U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. The meeting took place as part of His Royal Highness's official visit to the U.S. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of building ever closer Bahrain-U.S. relations, which have endured for more than 75 years and brought about a constant strategic partnership that has strengthened regional and global security, peace, stability and development. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it is uh, a pleasure to welcome uh, the uh, reference to Washington, uh, but I really should say back to Washington. Uh, I think you 
probably spent as much time here, including as a student at American University, as, uh, as any of us have. So this is, a, this is almost a second one. And uh, so we're so pleased to, uh, to welcome you here, to welcome you back. Uh, it is uh, evidence of, when we were just talking about this, uh, an extraordinary, long-standing uh, partnership between Bahrain and the United States going back 75 years, 75 years. Uh, through thick and thin. And uh, we deeply appreciate it, we deeply value it, uh, and uh, it's uh, important not only to remind ourselves of that, but of course to focus on the work that we have before us and, uh, going forward. I want to say at the outset uh, how much we appreciate it. Uh, Bahrain's strong support for the resolution, the historic resolution voted today uh, at the United Nations uh, General Assembly um, condemning the Russian aggression against Ukraine and supporting Ukraine uh, in its uh, efforts to preserve its sovereignty, its territorial integrity, uh, its independence. Uh, this was a uh, remarkable moment, 141 countries coming together um, loudly, clearly uh, on this matter. We're grateful for, uh, for Bahrain's uh, support. Uh, Bahrain, of course, is a uh, major non-NATO ally, uh, a close partner uh, on uh, security, but also on, on many other issues. I uh, applaud as well uh, the, uh, the work through the Abraham Accords uh, to uh, uh, free, uh, relations uh, between uh, Bahrain and Israel, and of course other countries in Israel, to a place where the benefits to the people of both countries are, are strongly felt. And uh, applaud your leadership. Uh, so we have uh, a lot to talk about. There's a lot going on in the world, a lot going on uh, in the region. Uh, and it's really good to have you here to be able to pursue our conversations. Welcome. Mr. Secretary, um, ladies and gentlemen, it's a, a real pleasure to be here. Thank you for welcoming me. Uh, it is uh, hope, homecoming of sorts always when I come to Washington. It's a city I know well. It is a city that has had great impact on uh, myself, people of Bahrain and my country. Uh, over the 75 years, we have built a security partnership that has guaranteed the security and stability, not just of the region, but of the world. And we have played a key role, uh, small though we are, in ensuring that uh, the United States and um, the responsible governments of the world preserve an international rules-based order. This is key. We have decades now of general global needs, uh, and that is largely due to that uh, international rules based order. Its current state of affairs is deeply concerning, and I think we must do everything in our power to urge everyone to de escalate and uh, to return to the more normative ways of solving issues. In any case, uh, I'm very happy that we can come here on the back uh, of that 75 year history mm -hmm. and on to bigger and better things. And I look forward to discussing ways that we can enhance our strategic security relationship and our strategic economic relationship. Also, by becoming ever more close in our work together, I think there is inevitable exchange of values and, and, and shared vision. And that can't be bad for anyone. So thank you for welcoming us and thank you for your such good care of us. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi, at the U.S. Capitol. His Royal Highness affirmed the depth of Bahrain-U.S. relations and the importance of further developing cooperation to achieve shared aspirations. His Royal Highness noted Bahrain's wide-ranging achievements following the launch of its National Comprehensive Development Program, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness reiterated the Kingdom's commitment to continuing its comprehensive development to achieve its far-reached goals goals. He highlighted the constructive uh, parliamentary cooperation between Bahrain and the U.S. and commended the U.S. for the extensive efforts it has undertaken in this field. The progress of bilateral relations as well as issues and developments of common interests were also discussed. 
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd J. Justin Austin III at the Pentagon. His Royal Highness highlighted the depth of Bahrain-U.S. relations, particularly the military and defense partnership, which spans 75 years. In this regard, he stressed the importance of further enhancing military and defense cooperation to achieve joint aspirations. His Royal Highness noted the importance of joint efforts to consolidate international peace and security, considering present challenges. He commended Bahrain's role in efforts alongside its allies to confront challenges that impede international progress and development. For his part, the U.S. Secretary of Defense affirmed the U.S.'s commitment to bolstering its long-standing strategic defense partnership with Bahrain. He also noted Bahrain's prominent leadership role in securing maritime security and its reliability as a major strategic non-NATO ally, which was showcased by its recent support of relief efforts and evacuations from Afghanistan last year. Issues of common interest were also discussed, as well as the importance of enhancing defense cooperation and coordination to support international efforts to strengthen security, stability and development. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met the Chair of uh, Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Bob Menendez, and Ranking Member of the Senate of Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Jim Marish, at the U.S. Capitol. The meeting took place as part of His Royal Highness's official visit to the U.S. His Royal Highness affirmed uh, that Bahrain is committed alongside its allies to upholding regional and global peace and security. He noted the importance of strengthening uh, the long-standing relations between Bahrain and the U.S. to develop cooperation efforts that benefit both countries and their people. His Royal Highness commended the U.S.'s efforts to promote peace, security and stability, which are in the best interests of sustainable development. He highlighted the importance of a synchronizing international efforts to consolidate regional and global development. Regional and international issues and developments of common interests were also discussed. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali al Saleh, delivered a speech during the 11th Conference of Association of Senes, Shura and Equivalent Councils in Africa and the Arab world held in Rabat, Morocco, in the presence of a number of heads of Arab and African councils and parliaments. al Saleh affirmed that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa, supports the strengthening of frameworks and cooperation and solidarity between Arab and African countries to achieve common interests between friendly and brotherly countries. He said that deepening Arab-African cooperation and solidarity is one of the urgent foreign policy priorities of the kingdom. As Saleh expressed pride in the march of national development and economic achievements which were achieved under the guidance and vision of His Majesty the King and through the high and continuous efforts made by the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. 
The Supreme Council of Health, the SCH Chairman, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, inaugurated the fourth edition of the Bahrain Diabetes and Endocrinology BDER conference on March 3rd till the 4th. He affirmed that the kingdom undertakes a preventative and curative initiatives for diabetes and endocrinology, non communicable diseases, as a priority in health plans and programs. SCH Chairman said that the strategic national plan includes combating chronic diseases and diabetes and reducing economic and health impacts resulting from the increase in diabetes rates and the consequent complications. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah praised the outcomes of the conference in all its editions and added that the fourth edition will address the latest results of using technology in diabetes treatment. The conference will also focus on the latest global recommendations for the thyroid cancer treatment, one of the most common cancers in the GCC countries, the latest methods of diagnosing and treating endocrine tumors and osteoporosis treatment. An opportunity that's at this annual conference, and this actually, you know, deal with all diabetes, their problems, and you know, all the complication of diabetes, and uh, actually, a lot of research from the young generation actually is, uh, you know, uh, uh, shown here, and I think that is very important to us that to have you know this conference annually and keep this going, because that is actually you know a way that to produce or to spread information, and uh, you know, give a chance for the young generation to show their. Uh, their effort and production. Uh, the first talk we started was a review of diabetes over the year, uh, discussing all the new data and the innovation and advances in treatment. After that, we broke into two groups. One was pediatric endocrinology, discussing the pediatrics issues that relate to diabetes, growth, and hormonal disorders. And the other group was adult endocrinology and diabetes, discussing thyroid cancers, discussing osteoporosis, and the new treatments available in those areas. We're going to talk about the advances in the uh, technology uh, of treating diabetes. As we all know that the most recent thing is the uh, insulin pump and the most recent form of insulin pump is the artificial pancreas which will check the uh, blood sugar without the uh, intervention of the uh, patient himself and the pump itself it will induce or uh, introduce the insulin uh, which is required by the by the body without the patient's uh, intervention the Tunisian President Qais Saeed received their Highnesses and Excellencies the Arab Ministers of Interior on the occasion of the convening of the 39th session of the Council of Arab Interior Ministers. The Tunisian President has welcomed the Arab Interior Ministers noting the importance of these meetings in promoting joint Arab security cooperation, expressing hope that they would be successful. The Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa headed Bahrain's delegation participating in the meeting, which was headed by the Omani Minister of Interior Saeed Hamoud bin Faisal al Busaidi, who took over the presidency of the session from the Iraqi Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Uthman Ali Farhoud al Ghanmi, the president of the previous session. The meeting began with a speech by the Tunisian head of government, Najla Boudin Ramadan, followed by a speech by His Royal Highness Saudi Interior Minister Prince Abdul Aziz bin Saud bin Nayef bin Abdul Aziz al Saud, the honorary chairman of the council. After that, the secretary general of the council, Dr. Mohammed bin Ali Kuman, delivered a speech. The Council expressed a thanks and appreciation to the Interior Ministry of Bahrain for developing an electronic system for the Council's General Secretariat by launching a website for human rights authorities of Arab Interior Ministries. The Ministry designed the website as one of the initiatives directed by the Interior Minister to promote Arab security cooperation for being the main factor in joint Arab work. During the session, the Interior Minister delivered a speech. أصحاب السمو والمعالي الحضور الكريم ونحن نحتفل بتدشين الموقع الإلكتروني الخاص بحقوق الإنسان في الأمان العام لمجلس وزراء الداخلية العرب فإنني أجدها مناسبة لأطلع مجلسكم الموقر على المشروع الإنساني الذي أنجزته مملكة البحرين للعقوبات البديلة وبرنامج السجون المفتوحة مؤكدا أن هذه المبادرة الإنسانية الحضارية تمت بفضل الرؤى الملكية السامية من لدن سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلال الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة عاهل البلاد المفدى حفظه الله ورعاه 
ومتابعة صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظه الله ورعاه مؤكدا أن الهدف من هذه المبادرة الإنسانية هو إصلاح المحكومين وتأهيلهم وإعطاهم فرصة لتصحيح سلوكهم من أجل إعادة دمجهم في المجتمع وإننا على استعداد في وزارة الداخلية للتواصل مع كافة أعضاء المجلس وإطلاعهم على تفاصيل التجربة ونتائجها أصحاب السمو والمعالي الحضور الكريم إن مرور ما يزيد عن أربعين عاما من التعاون الأمني منذ تأسيس مجلس وزراء الداخلية العرب له دليل راسخ على صدق الإرادة والتعاون والتضامن والثبات على دعم مسيرة التعاون الأمني العربي المشترك وتحقيق أهداف الرسالة الأمنية النبيلة لهذا المجلس من أجل الحفاظ على الأمن والنظام العام ولعلها مناسبة طيبة أستذكر فيها مناقب المكفور له صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير نايف بن عبد العزيز آل سعود طيب الله ثرى الذي رعى هذا المجلس منذ بداياته وقدم له كل الدعم والمساندة وحرص سموه وأخوانه الوزراء على استمرار انعقاد هذا المجلس في مختلف الظروف وكما تعلمون أيها الأخوة فإن الجرائم الحديثة والجرائم العابرة للحدود أصبحت أكثر انتشارا وتنوعت أساليبها مثل الجرائم الإلكترونية والرقمية وذلك من خلال ما توفره تقنية الاتصالات الحديثة الأمر الذي يفرض علينا مواكبة هذه التحديات بمنهجية أمنية عصرية تستوجب تخطي العقبات والحواجز السياسية من أجل تحقيق الاحتواء اللازم وتقليص المساحة الإجرامية لمكافحة انتقال الجريمة وذلك من خلال استغلال التقنيات الحديثة وربط مراكز العمليات الأمنية لتبادل المعلومات الأمنية الأساسية في إطار مشترك. ليتمكن المختصون من الاطلاع على ملامح الموقف الأمني المشترك بصورة فورية ومستمرة الأمر الذي يسهم في تطوير المنظومات الأمنية العربية وتعزيز قدرتها في مواجهة كافة المخاطر والتحديات الأمنية وفي هذا الإطار فإن الحفاظ على الأمن العربي وتقوية مرتكزات يبدأ بتعزيز التزام الدول الأعضاء بأمن بعضها وألا يتم استغلال أراضيها في التدخل بالشؤون الداخلية للدول الأخرى مؤكداً في هذا الشأن تمسكنا في هذا المجلس الأمني العربي وأهمية تفعيل أدواته الأمنية والإجراءات الصادرة عنه من أجل تعزيز أمن المواطن والمقيم في دولنا وفي ختام كلمتي يطيب لي أن أشيد بنتائج الاجتماعات التي عقدتها فرق العمل المعنية والجهود الأمنية العربية المشتركة من أجل تعزيز قدراتنا الأمنية في مواجهة التحديات متمنيا لاجتماعنا التوفيق والسداد لما فيه خير أمتنا وشعوبنا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The attendees reviewed topics on the agenda in which the council approved the 10th phase plan to fight the illicit use of narcotics and uh, psychotropic substances. The meeting approved a sixth phase plan for the Arab strategy for civil protection and a ninth phase plan for the Arab strategy to combat terrorism for the next three years. The council also valued the existing cooperation between the council's general secretariat and regional and international agencies. It stressed the importance of the Euro-Arab border security conference results that was held in Jordan in December of 2021. 
On the sideline of the meeting, the interior minister received his Saudi counterpart, in which he hailed the brotherly ties between the two countries. The two sides reviewed security cooperation to protect joint interests, security and stability. He also met with the UAE Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Interior, His Highness Sheikh Saif bin Zayed. He hailed the historical and brotherly ties between the two brotherly countries and dedication to reinforce security cooperation. Interior Minister met his Tunisian counterpart and reviewed security topics, hailing solid relations between Bahrain and Tunisia. He met the Egyptian Interior Minister Mahmoud Tawfiq and reviewed security cooperation and coordination. He also met with the Lebanese Minister of Interior and Municipalities, Judge Bassam Mawlawi, and Yemeni Minister of Interior, Major General Ibrahim Ali Ahmed Haydan, and reviewed security cooperation. The Interior Minister met the President of the International Criminal Police Organization, Interpol, Dr. Ahmed Nasr al-Raisi. He congratulated him for taking up this prestigious international post, valuing the role of Interpol in unifying international efforts to fight security threats. Interior Minister also met the Secretary General of the Council, Dr. Mohammed bin Ali Kuman, valuing the coordination role of the General Secretariat in promoting joint security work. In an essential step towards improving the emergency department, which will lead to an enhancement of the quality and safety of care for citizens and residents in the kingdom, the Salmaniya Medical Complex is in process of an expansion project for the emergency department with the aim to accommodate the high volume of visits to the department, reduce waiting times and improving the quality of the services delivered and increase patient satisfaction. To speak more about this, we are joined over the phone by geriatric medicine specialist at the emergency department management team, Dr. Mahmoud Saeed. Hello, Dr. Mahmoud. Can you tell us about the new expansion project for the emergency department at Salmania Medical Complex? Dr. Mahmoud? Hi, good evening, Sarah. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, hi, good evening. And good evening to everyone who's listening to us tonight. Uh, so. 
Once completed, uh, this new emergency department will allow for an increase from a current 80 beds to a total of 125 beds, which will make it the biggest in the kingdom. There will be an increase in the capacity of the waiting and the triage areas and consultation rooms and increase in the number of the adult emergency room. Additionally, there will also be uh, an increase in the number of beds in the, in the adult resuscitation area to accommodate the high volume of critical cases seen on a daily basis. Also, a separate pediatric area will be isolated from the adult section with its own entrance, waiting area, and resuscitation room for critical cases. That's great. Doctor, can you elaborate on these changes uh, in the operations of the emergency department? How are they going to affect patients and visitors? Yes, yeah, so to allow for this major transformation, uh, construction works are currently underway with multiple diversions applied. Uh, we have studied multiple options extensively for those diversions, and the best uh, option um, has been selected. The main entrance is currently completely blocked and is diverted to gate number seven for pedestrians and gate number eight for ambulances. Now, both of those gates are somewhat close to each other. Therefore, a barrier has been installed for patients and visitor safety. Patients uh, will need to enter through a COVID-19 screen tent where their temperature will be checked and once cleared will be instructed to go to gate number seven. The registration desk and triage area will be on the left while the pharmacy and main examination area will be on the right. And the heart tracing room will be allocated beside the lip. Additionally, uh, please keep in mind that this temporary flow is a one-way system, and once patients have been discharged to exit through the obstetrics and gynecology emergency department exit and not go back to where they entered. So to assist visitors, also multiple time posts have been installed, and several uh, staff members will be available 24-7 to guide them through their visit. We highly encourage uh, patients and visitors to observe caution during this period and encourage following the signs and regulations to maintain their safety, the safety of other patients, and the safety of their loved ones. That's good to know. That was geriatric medicine specialist at the Emergency Department Management Team, Dr. Mahmoud Al-Saeed. Thank you for joining us.